Hello, welcome back to Tarot Time with Andy. Thank you for being here. This is my vibrational reading. Please do your own research for entertainment purposes and allegedly. Hello, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, and thank you for the super thanks. Today I am using the Joker deck. Here we go. It's a fun one. Fun imagery. Anyways, today's spread is going to be about Una Page Heard, Amber Heard's daughter. And is she using uh, replacement children, run to children? Is she, let's find out, let's ask the pendulum because that is what is being spoken about publicly. Does Amber Heard have an actual child that is hers? Did she actually use a surrogate and does she actually have possession of a child that is hers? Does Amber Heard have a child? And it's saying maybe. Well, that's weird. Okay, is it a surrogate child? Yes, okay. Does she take care of this surrogate child? Yes. Is it her eggs? Is it her eggs? Yes, okay. Is she actually taking care of this child? Is she actually taking care of this child, Una Page, known as Una Page? Yes. Does she leave the child with nannies and care most of the time? Most of the time is the child in someone else's care? Yes. Okay. Is the father Elon Musk? Is the father Elon Musk? Yes. Now, just to play around and have fun here, so you guys can see, is my tablecloth a bright green? Is my tablecloth a bright green? No. Is my tablecloth red? Is my tablecloth red? No. Am I using the normal rider weight deck today? circling no okay so here we go is uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard divorced are they divorced yes did they go through an ugly divorce with court battle court battles yes did Amber ever love Johnny Depp did she ever truly love him no Okay, that's just to clarify so you can see, okay? That's why I did that, because it's always fun to do. Okay, let's get some cards on Ona Page. So my pendulum says there is a child here. So we have here Eight of Pentacles. So with the Eight of Pentacles, she's trying to build up a job, trying to work, self-improvement. She's trying to bring some money in. Uh, she's got some major goals to accomplish. She's very dedicated to building a cornucopia, which is basically to fill up her table full of money. Uh, she wants money. She needs money. She needs to overcome the situation uh, because she's kind of bad with money, to be honest, and she spent it on lawyers. So she's very dedicated. She has a lot to address, and she's trying for self-improvement, although her ways are not very smart, I would say, based on my last spread. So that's why she's doing what she's doing. Uh, she's trying to bring money to life, in essence, energy to life, pentacles to life, which is home, family, and career. She wants to to um, get back to what she used to do, but she's having problems right now. She's trying to do it, trying to overcome it so that she can actually provide for a home, uh, for any kind of stability. And it's something she has to pr do with movements because eight is about doing it through movement. Uh, so not the best means that she's doing it, but here you go. Let's get to the challenging position. Challenging position for Ona Page having Amber as a mother. Ch challenging position is the Eight of Cups. Wow, we got a lot of that. Emotionally overcoming the situation. So this is uh, two eights in a row. She's got a lot to overcome with movements. And she needs to manifest. She needs to manifest money for a home life, for career, uh, for her personal physical being, for her, you know, just all around home environment needs money. She needs money. Again, she needs emotions too. So this is the emotions needing needing someone to love. She wants someone someone to uh, to help her out. 
Uh, this is here, leaving others behind. This is why she left. She's had a major lifestyle change. It is about taking on a lifestyle change. Uh, and it's a transition period and it's a path of the unknown because she hasn't arrived yet. It's something to overcome. So she's had to, it's empowerment by walking away. That's why she doesn't, she's not in the U.S. right now. She feels empowered by leaving and doing it in a kind of a, a sketchy way, I would say. So yes, and emotionally, it was an emotional situation to walk away from. It, it is a total lifestyle change for her and it's, it, her path is unknown. She does not know where she's going to land. So that's the problem with a child because the child does not truly have a stable home environment. Uh, being, uh, you know, uh, pulled pulled in, in various places, good thing for her, she'll never probably ever remember it. So that's the good point. So what is the focal point here? The focal point here. Focal point is two of swords in reverse. Two of swords in reverse is she's got a lot of indecision. Uh, dealing with a lot of conf uh, conflicts, and she has got a lot of conflicting thoughts of what to do. She doesn't know her path. Uh, she just knows that she cannot sit there and idle. Uh, the fork in the road's been removed. She really doesn't have a lot of options. She cannot trust her intuition because she's not tapped into it. Uh, she cannot consider things as a whole because she's pretty dysregulated. Uh, she's not dealing with obstacles in a very positive way because she's got a blocked heart chakra. Uh, so as a result of her blocked heart chakra, not capable of truly feeling empathy and love for others, she's dealing with the consequences. And so she's feeling quite confused because she doesn't understand herself. She doesn't realize she cannot use her heart. She doesn't really have the ability. Uh, she makes a lot of poor decisions and with lies, those swords are down. So that is duality of lies. And she knows for sure that she she is a liar and she's dealing with it because she truly does not connect and bond and, and with anybody. And that includes her daughter. There is no bonding. Her heart chakra is closed. It is completely closed. So that's the sad part because she's a sociopath. If they feel anything, it's just a flash in the pan. It's like I said this and I'll keep saying it's like hot water hitting a frying pan. It dissipates real quickly. It comes, but it goes very brief. It's a very brief feeling for them. Uh, it, it can be felt, felt. The only people that cannot feel it is a true psychopath. Primary factor one psychopath, that I don't think she is at all. And her psychiatrist said she wasn't. So uh, I believe it. She's histrionic and uh, borderline. And so that with them, they do have those flashes, but it's fleeting. So let's get to the past position. Past position that no longer serves. That is the two of pentacles, juggling money. Uh, she doesn't have money to juggle right now. She doesn't. She she's trying to balance the scale between work and play. And right now, I think she's completely focused on survival. These two cards here is trying to survive as far as living conditions and emotionally being challenged. So there is no juggling act right now between work and play. She cannot juggle anything. She can't even juggle herself. She's very unbalanced and it doesn't serve her anymore to even try and juggle because right now she's hyper-focused on this and this. Uh, she's hyper-focused on she's dealing with the consequences of her actions. So right now, uh, the juggling and going to the bank and actually getting money is not an option for her anymore. She can't go to a banker and say, hey, give me a loan, pay my pay my lawyers, uh, will you take care of me? Because they're going to be like, hey, we're kind of empty-handed here. So kind of empty-handed. This guy's got a can like this. Well, I have nothing to truly give you is how I feel about this. And then her hand sitting here going, well, where is it? Can you please hand it to me? Uh, no, we don't have this juggling act anymore for you. It doesn't, it's not here for you. Uh, it's, the bank is dry. The bank is dry for her. She had to sell off her house in Yucca Valley. So she's in a lot of financial debt right now. A lot of people to pay off uh, along with... Um, that promissory that she made to a uh, charity that she's not living up to. So yeah, she's in deep, deep, you know what? Let's get to the hidden energy, hidden energy for Ona. The hidden energy for Ona and her mother. What we have here is the Knight of Swords. She knows she needs to do it and she needs to do it quickly. She's got to act fast. She has to do it. It needed to be done yesterday, the month before, months before. It's fighting energy. Uh, and she just really feels the need to do it and do it now. It felt kind of unexpected and she needs to go on the attack. She needs to go on the attack to fix these problems. 
So it's kind of like the shark attack card. I need to fix this. I need to hit the hit the bullseye here because I don't have time to waste. I better act and I better act now and I better be, my, my uh, aim better be right. So she's got aims to meet and she wants to hit the, hit it right there in that center there. She wants to hit it right in that sweet spot and she needs to do it now. Uh, she, she has no time to waste. Let's go to the future, the future. The future here is, wow, death, transformation. She feels exposed. Uh, she feels like everyone's x-rayed her to death and she feels exposed is how I feel about this particular card. Uh, the death is total transformation, trying to mature. She needs to mature, uh, but is actually at a slow pace with this card. She needs to shed into a butterfly, going from a cocoon to a butterfly with her ideas and opinions becoming her own person. Typically that occurs between the ages of 28 and 31. I think she's older. So basically she's kind of falling behind in her maturity on the schedule of what maturity should be. I think she's older than 31. So anyways, this is trying to mature. And if not, it is literal death, okay? So she knows she needs to mature. She needs to grow up. She needs to get out of her little cocoon and she needs to put on her big girl panties and she needs to mature and take care of her child. And she feels overly exposed now, overly exposed. Everybody's looking at her. Everyone's dissecting her. And that's why she knows she needs to grow up. Let's get to the, the feelings in the situation. And having a child will help her grow up because she's taking care of another human being. Then we have here in the feelings in the situation, seven of swords. Seven of swords is she knows she's a liar. She's a deception. She's dishonest. She's a snake in the grass. She's got a brittle ego, dishonorable acts. She's attempting goals and with bad motives and, and someone you should not trust ever. She will betray you. Total, complete, dishonorable individual. And her motives are always negative and, and self-serving. And she knows that. She feels overexposed. And that's why she had to flee. That's why she left. Let's get to the outside influences affecting this own up page and her mother. Not good to have this as a mother. She's got to grow up. She knows it. She's got to grow up so she doesn't continue this card here. Then we have here the outside influences is six of cups in reverse. Nobody feels harmony with her. Emotionally dysregulated. Six of cups in reverse is she is stuck in the past with negative feelings. She's unhappy. And she's not feeling loved by anyone. So I would say this is going to transpire over into her daughter because mother needs to grow up emotionally, but nobody likes mother. And it's going to unfortunately affect the child because as I said here, she has a blocked heart chakra. She's not loved. So the daughter's going to grow up to realize that her mother is a liar and she's hated in society and public. So the, the daughter is going to most likely feel that as well. Uh, the daughter's going to feel the conflicts that the mother has. And um, the daughter's going to end up not feeling loved, unfortunately. That's what this is. Uh, the Six of Cups upright is feeling like you had a really positive um, childhood, really positive childhood memories and traditions. The child, she's going to feel like she was not truly loved. She's going to have mother issues, father issues, uh, negative feelings. She's going to feel like her childhood was not normal, not a normal childhood at all. She's not going to feel nostalgic for her mother. She's going to have, she's going to remember her mother, see her mother for being overexposed, for always um, going on the shark attack, fighting energy. She's always going to realize her mother has a blocked heart shocker. She's always going to realize that her mother is always trying to overcome things with movements, with money, home, trying to survive trying to trying to find love constantly in the hunt for love constantly seeking out uh new new energy juggling energy between work and play so she's going to be dealing with a working parent who is hated publicly and she's going to feel the backlash and the lack of love the lack of positive nostalgia the lack of a positive childhood she's going to feel like she's unloved so this is typical of a child of a sociopath or a narcissist or uh, anyone with those comorbidities, uh, which I say is a sociopath. So I personally think she's a sociopath. So let's go to the um, the hopes and fears. The hopes and fears in this situation. The hopes and fears in this situation. That pot. We have here nine of swords in reverse. Nine of swords in reverse is 
basically, uh, it's the weeping woman. It is the weeping woman crying, insomnia, life's a nightmare, living in fear, bad omen, lots of rumination and depression. So here it's always about taking a step back and feeling shame and being told no. So I would say Ona Page is going to feel the shame, the shame of dealing with a, a, a mother who's provided a life of a nightmare, basically. And it feels like a bad omen having her as a mother. And there's going to be a lot of depression, a lot of depression in the home and in the life and the lifestyle. Eventually it will come to that. Not now necessarily, but eventually probably when she hits puberty, uh, that's usually when all of this starts to get really triggered. I've noticed it's typically early, very early teens, uh, you know, 12, 11, 12, 13 is when she's probably going to really start to recognize it and feel it as young as maybe eight. She will start to see it. She'll probably start to really feel and see it by the time she's six to eight. By the time she's, you know, 11, 12, 13, it's going to be full blown. And that's typically what happens. And probably by that age, she will have her own mental health disorder more than likely because of the shame. This is shame. So she's going to feel shame. She's going to have a shame based disorder, which is narcissism. So she will more than likely end up as a narcissist like her mother because it is a shame based disorder from dealing with the ongoing obstacles, having to overcome all that sword energy um, and feeling like a prisoner in essence with her mother. So, and a very negative home environment. So let's go to and such overexposure of her mother's uh, ways too. And so she's gonna become aware of it. So let's get to the final outcome for Ona Page. Final outcome for Ona Page, final out outcome. Too many, gonna keep pulling. I don't like it when there's too many. There we go. Final outcome of Ona Page is the Three of Swords in reverse. She's gonna be forced to try and heal from a horrible life. Uh, she may end up healing from the shame, so that's good. Uh, it is basically trying to forgive her mother and not hurt as much as her mother, still communicate with her, still will reconcile with her in some level. Uh, here, there's a lack of communication. So she will not shut off total communication from her mother, uh, but there's still it's still suffering. It's still emotional torment. It's still feeling the betrayal and upheaval of this Three of Swords energy, which is really a life of pain. So it feels like Ona Page is going to be able to try and overcome some of the shame, some of the suffering, uh, and will keep communication flow going, probably because if she'll feel that it's in her mother's best interest to keep her... Keep her from getting too uh, too uh, toxic, I would say. So there's this healing and forgiveness that will occur for Ona. So I see her, she will have the shame. She will feel the pain and suffering. But for some reason, someone, some, something's going to happen where maybe she will be in treatment and that will heal her. And it, she will have early, early help available to keep her from going into a full-blown disorder. Let's see what we have here. The Knight of Cups. Yes, someone's going to come in with a loving energy and handle the situation. She's going to have a good offer coming, a loving, good offer, a very loving energy that's going to give her what she needs, and that's going to balance her. That's what's going to heal her. It's going to come from a loving person. Uh, you know, good love, help on the way. So help will be on the way. It's going to be someone who's very much the artist type, It'll be a proposal of love and it'll be uplifting so that she can focus on her dreams, her dreams, not her mother's dreams. So that is how I see that. So that is good. She will end up feeling the shame, but heal, realizing her mother is who she is, but will be a forgiving energy type and not end up like her mother, but she will be faced with it with the shame here. So that is how I see that. At the bottom of the deck, what do I have here? Trying to protect what was um, accomplished so far and perseverance. Perseverance and trying to grow despite the conflicts, despite the uncertainty, because this is a seven. Sevens is about uncertainty. Sevens is about waiting. So it's a waiting game. It hasn't happened yet. It will happen. And, you know, just this perseverance will lead to some success for herself and by all means necessary to succeed, not giving up, 
uh, trying to build herself up, build a job, build a life for herself. So that's how I see Ona Page's life unfolding. And yes, I do think she does have her. Um, so yeah, uh, it's looking like it just seems a little skittish because the child's being cared for by others while she lives this life of, of freedom and wild. She's like a wild child, you know, um, she is a wild child. She's a complete total wild child energy. And so what do they do? They, they tend to dump their kids off on into someone else and brief moments of encounters. And, you know, I'm going to go do this. I'll be gone for the, you know, I'll see you for a couple hours a day. And, so the child's the child's is kind of a uh, a prop uh, for photographs and very minimal contact. It's not unusual for celebrities to do that. I will not mention names, but there's some out there that use it strictly for prop, and they're so busy working, so busy making their millions. The child sees very little of the parents. The child only really truly bonds with the nannies or whoever's caring for them. That's why so many of these celebrity children end up as drug addicts with all these personality disorders because the parent truly was never there for them. They don't even know their parent. And it's looking like someone's going to come in and help this young woman, this young baby, this young Ona, uh, that will give her the hope that she needs. So that's that right there. So it will be okay for her in the long run, but she will be suffering and fighting off the shame of what she experienced and because the toxic parents will offshoot their own shame and put it onto the child because that's how they emotionally regulate that's why we see the shame because her mom will try and offshoot well if it wasn't for you life would be easier you know they devalue there's these little micro devaluing that occurs mixed in with some love bombing and then giving them material goods as means of keeping them around and then back to devaluing and then, you know, love bombing them again. So it creates a shame based disorder, but there'll be some early help for her coming in. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoy this till next time. Like, and subscribe. Bye.